Welcome to Be The Round Global Fellowship. I'm Pastor Coach Anthony McKissick Sr. And what this is, this is our Bible study series. We are connecting the dots with women of God. Connecting the dots with women of God, part one. So what I'll do is after we have a couple of our sermons, we're on a series about women. I'll come here in our Bible study session and I'll connect the dots. So far we've had three. We've had Deborah, Rahab, in the widow with the oil. And what I'm going to do is tell you some of the things that I learned from those women. I'm also going to connect the dots and how all three of those women had things in common and things that we can learn, not just from each of them, but all of them together. But first, I want you to share, share this message, share this broadcast, share this stream. And then I want you to go to our website, www.betheram.com. And I need you to bookmark it. Because our website has stuff on it that YouTube does not. Our website has things on it that Facebook does not, Instagram does not, Twitter, uh, Snapchat, TikTok, wherever you are watching this, our website is the official information hub. That's when you'll find out things like we're having an in-person service called The Gathering this Sunday, 10 o'clock, at the Palmetto Train Depot. If you come at 11 we're going to be done having church because we're not there a long time as far as preaching, singing, you know, praying, stuff like that. But we will be having like a game night after or a game day afterwards. So make sure that you're going to the website so you can know about this stuff. You can know about the outreach. You can know about the giveaways, you know, school supplies, things like that. You need to go to the website. Just bookmark it. That way it's on the desktop of your phone. But let's pray first. God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for another opportunity to spread your word. God, you said that you love us and that you give your life or you, you gave your son's life for us. He sacrificed his life. So what a shame will it be that we will walk and we won't walk in freedom, even though the way has been paved already. So God, we just thank you. We ask that you would be with us for these few five minutes. Give us an opportunity to learn from each other. Let this fellowship be what it needs to be and let it reach who it needs to reach. God, we love you, we honor you, and we praise you. In your son Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So once again, we are connecting the dots with the women of God. This is our Bible study that goes along with our sermon series. We've been talking about women of the Bible for, I mean, it's, it's been a while now. It's been a month. I'm going to talk about them this Sunday. The next Sunday, we're talking about Rahab. Uh, no, no, we're talking about Hagar. I mean, it's coming. It's getting better. It's getting bigger. It's getting bolder. But let's talk about the first three that we had. The first one we had was Deborah. She was a judge. You can find her story in Judges chapter four. The points we had was Deborah was not called by man. She wasn't called by man. She was called by God. I don't know if she was sent by God but she was not called by man. Deborah was a plan A, not a plan B. So she wasn't God's second thought. She wasn't, I can't find anybody else, so let me go get this thing to Deborah. No. And the last one is Deborah did not lose herself in her title because she was a judge, the first female judge, the only woman judge. She didn't walk around saying, I'm the HBIC. I run this show, queen be in the house. I've been waiting for something. No. She didn't let that thing go to her head. And then we start talking about Rahab. Our, our next sermon was Rahab. And this was a prostitute. She was a harlot. You can find her story in Joshua chapter 2. And what I learned from Rahab and what we learned was that God sees you right where you are. God can hide you and he will hide you when you don't need to be seen. And God will cover you when he sends you out. And we learned that because Rahab did that to the spies. She saw them for who they are, even though they was on some mess. Where they are, they was on their job, but it was on some mess as well. And then she hid them when the men tried to come get them. Now, somebody had already told that the, the spies were in this place, so she hid them on the roof under some flax. And then she covered for her family. She said, you know what, I wanna, I wanna make sure that I've helped you out, now I need you to help me out. So when you come back through this city, I need you to spare my family's life. Everybody in my house, not just me. So the spies told her, what I'll do is I, I'll give you this red string and you, you, know, you put it out your window 
And when we come through tying this place up, when we see that red string in the window, we're going to bypass your home. And that's what they did. So she covered them. And the last one, which was last week, could have been a little confusing for some. So I'm glad we're here to make sure that I clarify some of it after, you know, rewatching it myself. I'm like, well, maybe I should have gone deeper. But it was about the widow. She was a widow who uh, worked with the jars of oils. And I would say that she's a hustler. Uh, yeah, I mean, she had some things she could have done. She didn't work outside home with how many women did in that time. But uh, it let us know that God knows our problems. This woman had a lot of problems. Her husband had just died. I mean, she was doing well. She married a good guy. He was one of the, the called ones. He worked with the prophets. He worked with the higher ups. And then uh, they were still in debt. So just because you work in the church, just because you save, just because you love God, does not mean that you might not find yourself in debt if you don't handle your money right. Also, she found herself, uh, I mean, single. She was a widow, and a widow wasn't like, I mean, it was a widow was a burden back then. Now, I know now, I'm not gonna talk about it, but however, God knew her problems. Her sons were about to be taken as uh, collateral to pay back her debt. And then it says God releases our potential. And that happened when God told her that, hey, I need you to go and uh, collect these jars. And with these jars, just start filling them up and sell, you know, from what you have. Sell from what you have. And it said God gives us provision. So God provides. That has been our scripture here. Be the Ram Global Fellowship for the old time that God will provide. And I promise you, I promise you. Every time that I speak that out my mouth, miracles happen. And I'm going to say that right here on live. I don't say television, but live intervision, internet vision. It happens. Whenever I am finding myself like, man, ain't no websites coming in. It ain't the first. It ain't the 15th. Uh, these folks is, you know, they want their money. I say, hey, God will provide. And what it does, it says that I'm not going to worry. God will provide. I still ties. Yes, I still ties. Do you have to? That's between you and God. But I ties because it works. It works for me. It works for my house. And I will continue to tithe. And they said, well, pastor, you are the pastor. So aren't you giving to your church? Yes, I am. But I was also tithing faithfully when I was not in my own church. I was tithing into other churches, and now I go above and beyond because I put God first in my finances, and second, I trust him with my finances. I trust that I can give, and it will be given unto me abundantly, above all, shaken, pressed together, and overflow. I believe that, and I'm going to keep on believing. So God gives us provision. So now I'm going to tell you seven things that are, are all connected with these women, these ladies, seven things. And it connected to me personally. Note takers, write them down, take your notes, so, you know, do what you gotta do. If you're not a note taker, you're like my son AJ, who's just smarter than everybody else. He's able to remember everything without taking notes and God bless you. But the first thing is that neither of these women were idea. They weren't idea women. Deborah was not the idea choice for a judge. Uh, Rahab was not the idea choice for someone who would actually be helping the kingdom of God. It was a she was a prostitute. Deborah was a woman, and the widow was not idea to have her own business. She was a business owner. Owner. I called her a hustler. I should have called her a business owner. She was a, a woman business owner. Let me correct myself. So neither one of these were idea. Who would have thought that a woman would be a judge in a land full of men in the Bible, even in the Bible, when a lot of women don't even have names, they're somebody's wife. They're, uh, you know, like you think about, you know, uh, several times in the Bible that, that women didn't get named. The only woman didn't have a name, uh, you know, Potiphar's wife. What was her name? We know her as Potiphar's wife, Uriah's wife. Even though she is David's wife, she's still Uriah's wife, almost as if she's property. But this was a woman who was held to the highest uh, leadership thing that she could be at the time. She was a judge. Then you have a prostitute. 
who helped out the kingdom of God. And then you have a widow. She has grown boys or, or boys or young men and she's her husband has passed away. She's gone through the struggles of life. And now she becomes a successful business owner. Now she goes viral for these essential oils, Lady Max Essentials. I hope her, her business pops off before, you know, I'm gone. I don't want to be like, oh, her. no. You would think that it would be somebody who's young and energetic and have done their research. And now it's time for them to jump off. No, you have a widow who became a business owner. So number one, neither of these women were idea. Number two, they did not look for handouts. Although all of them were in situations that they could have, you know, been begging and asked for things like, okay, well, because I am the woman, the only woman judge, the only female judge, now I need you to bow to my every need. I need every woman to tattoo a big D on, on her arm. And I need, you know, as Rahab as a prostitute, you know, well, because I need you to spare my whole city. No, these women were women who did what they did and they did not need a handout. They were strong in what they did. They were confident in what they did. What can we learn for that? Just because I'm going through does not mean I need to start looking for everybody to help me. These women ended up being the ones that helped others. So we got to understand that just because we going through does not mean that everybody even cares that we're going through. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing they can do for us anyway. Most of us say, well, I ain't got no money, but I'll pray for you. No, what I need you to do first is pray for me. Because your prayer reaches heaven. Your little money is only going to reach the rent man. It's only going to reach the light man. Maybe the McDonald's man, Max, or something like that. Get some wings. So I need you to understand that the first thing I want you to do for me is pray. These women, they did not look for handouts. Number three, God used them where they were. He used them right where they were. He didn't have to move them. He didn't have to move them out of position. They didn't have to go to a new location. Well, once I move to Atlanta, everything's going to be all right. Oh, I just need to get out of this area. I've been in Atlanta too long. Let me move to Miami. Or maybe it's Texas. God has a new land for me. The prophet told me. God used Deborah. Deborah. She was under the same palm tree as she was before she was a judge. Rahab. A prostitute used hit her right in the in the house that she was in, right up there in the brothel. That's where God used her. God used the widow in the same city. I think God does that. I think God uses us right where we are because the familiarity. People have seen us struggle. People know what we did. People know what we went through. And now they see God's hand on our life. I think that God is telling us through these three women to just stay where you are so that people can see the God in you. They'll see that, wow, I watched him go through a divorce. I watched him be homeless. I watched her lose all that weight because she was sick. I watched her beat cancer. I watched her get misabused and uh, mistreated on, on her job. I watched her husband, you know, get locked up. I, I watched the kids go to jail. I watched somebody coming out the closet here and there and uh, somebody getting, uh, you know, just something catastrophic. And now I'm watching God's hand on their life. I see God fixing that marriage. I see God making them a business owner. I see God elevating them. God used these women right where they were. You don't have to always move to a new place in order for God to use you. Number four, they didn't allow what they were called to dictate who they were. We have to stop allowing what people call us and what we call ourselves dictate who we really are. Do you know what people probably call the widow. Oh, you're nothing but a burden. Look at you, your husband dead. Now you're worthless. Nobody want to marry you because you're old. 
Nobody want kids when your kids is grown and you in debt. You are a disgrace to the community. We don't want you around. Think about Rahab. You old skeezer. You blah, 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 blah. You know they call this woman every name under the sun. They called her some names. And she had to understand, I may be operating as a prostitute, but that's not going to stop me from moving into who God has called me to be. That's not going to stop me from saving my family. I'm not going to allow because somebody else does not value my life because I've done some things that's not going to stop me from being who I am. Deborah, you old woman. You are a woman. You chick, you this, you that. You know how many people probably say, well, I'm not going to go talk to that old woman, Judge. She, what she going to tell me? That's a woman. How many times have you messed your blessing because of what the blessing was in? I don't, I don't want to talk to them. These women did not allow what other people called them dictate who they were. Number five, they all had motherly instincts. They were women who were still women. Just because they were women in power, just because they were women who were in, you know, in places or positions to help others, they still had their motherly instincts. Think about it. The widow, she did all that to take care of her house. You know what? I may not be able to go out there and work these fields. I may not be able to do this, but I bet you I get this oil. I bet you these kids are going to eat. Think about Rahab. A mother protects. A mother nurtures. Rahab took everybody in her house. Said, family, I need y'all all over here right now because I need to make sure that my offspring is okay. Her, she thought about her family. Let's just be honest, a lot of men, we think about ourselves. We are protectors, but we think about ourselves too. These women, like Deborah, she thought about her family. Deborah, it said that she was like a mother. She didn't go out to war. She didn't say that, oh, because I'm the head in charge, I'm going to go get this heavy sword and get out of position. No. So women, when you move up, you're still a woman. You're still a mother. You may not have kids physically, but you are a mother. There's something in you that we just don't have as men, and we need you to be mothers. Number six, they were all ahead of their time. I think that we will have a woman president one day. Might be a black woman, might be a Hispanic woman, but there's nothing wrong with women in leadership. There was a time that women couldn't pastor, women couldn't preach, women couldn't do anything that had something to do with telling a man what to do. Let's just call it what it is. These women were ahead of her time. Deborah and her leadership skills, she was ahead of her time. And you talk about Rahab. I think Rahab is an example of the future of the church. People who are not ashamed of what they've been through. You know, we all talk about, oh, I'm so glad I don't look like what I've been through. So sometimes you may need to look like it so that others can identify with it because we get so clean, we get so far away from what we've been through that people don't recognize. They're like, man, I can't be a Christian because I think Rahab is an example of, you know what? Yeah, I done been in the, the house, the, the brothel all this time. Yeah, I'm drunk as a skunk, but I'm going to make sure that my, my family's taken care of. I'm going to make sure that I go to God. I make sure that I'm obedient to my call. I'm going to make sure what I did doesn't stop me from what I'm going to do and what I'm doing. Think about the widow. She was ahead of her time, too. She was a business owner who was a woman, a very successful businesswoman. When I think about her, I think about Tabitha Brown. I know she's not a widow, but Tabitha Brown was where she was at, doing what she was doing, something she always did. And God put his hand on that thing and boom. I think about that girl, Lele. Yeah, my little daughter, she loves that girl, Lele. I don't know much about her, but I know she's on a bunch of stuff, more stuff than I'm on. And I've been living probably three times longer than her. 
She's ahead of her time. And the last one, their strength as a woman did not downplay men at all. They were in a whole separate category. Sometimes men, and I can only speak to men because I am a man, when we move up, we want to elevate our strength and say what a woman can't do. I didn't hear any time in this story where the women said, I'm so strong and you're so weak. My praise does not have to be your insult. This is an example of, I don't have to be ashamed and apologetic for being blessed because God put his hands on me does not mean that I gotta be sorry because you don't feel blessed because you don't have something. Think about it. Let me go back over these. Number one, they were not idea. Number two, they didn't look for handouts. Number three, God used them right where they were. Number four, they didn't allow what they were called to dictate who they were. Number five, they all had motherly instincts. Number six, they were ahead of their time. And number six, seven, their strength as women didn't downplay men. Their strength as women did not downplay men. These three women, Deborah, Rahab, and the widow, they can teach us a lot. And I think I could probably go on and on and on, but I won't because I know I only ask for a few five minutes. But I thank you for paying attention. I thank you for following us. I thank you that this uh, is reaching you. And if you're being blessed as a result of this, comment, let me know, follow us online. Let me know. But let's pray. God, thank you for this time of Bible enrichment. Thank you for what you're doing in my life, in our life, and in our ministry. God, I thank you for the obedience that you're placing over my heart. I thank you for conviction, conviction of our people, conviction of my mind, conviction of oh God. Just thank you for the, your conviction. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. God, I ask that you would uh, cover us as we go from this virtual atmosphere, God. Cover our, our, our search history. God, cover it. God, because we go to some websites and we don't need to be going to. We'll leave right from this Bible study and go type in some stuff we ain't got no business doing. So, God, just cover us. Guide our thoughts. Guide our minds. Guide us and cover us with love. God, we thank you. And if anyone doesn't know you, God, I ask that they will call out to you and ask for forgiveness for not knowing you, God, and, and that you would uh, just, just teach them how to be a better follower of Christ, God. As long as they believe that your son came down from heaven and earth, died on the cross, sacrificed his life, got up in three days, and descended in 40. God, we love you, we praise you, we honor you. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. Once again, thank you for hanging out with us for these few minutes. If you need to rewind it, share it, Text somebody, tag somebody, tell somebody. Do what you need to do. But in the meantime, this is Pastor Coach McKissick of Be The Ram Global Fellowship. I challenge you to win the 97% and be the ram in somebody's life. God loves you and so do I. That's it. That's all. And goodbye. Have a great week and I'll see you Sunday.